So I had a recent project where I had to create some realistic liquid splash simulations. But the thing is, I'd never created a liquid sim in my life. If I couldn't get it done, I would lose the client, the paycheck, and my reputation. So how hard could it be, right? Let's just say I went through a lot of versions, but eventually I cracked it. So let's break down what went wrong, what went right, and why liquid simulations are nowhere near as forgiving as particle simulations. The base of the project was the same as the powder explosion video I recently released. With the key movement and the beat of the animation already locked in from that, I was able to have a great framework for which to build the liquid simulation splashes from. If you want to see that video, the link's in the description. The Sim. I set up a roughened version of the packet to act as a collider and started testing various different ways of getting a nice splash to rack around the packet. But what I quickly learned was liquid simulations don't work like particle and pyro simulations, unfortunately. You can't just test it like low res geo or low particle counts and get your look and then up res it for render later on. Unfortunately, every time you change something of a liquid sim, everything else changes, the whole look, everything. Because liquid sim particles interact with all the other particles around it in the simulation, if you increase the number of particles, it changes the whole interaction because there's now more particles to interact with. Tweak one thing and everything breaks. It's like, imagine baking a cake, but every time you turn the dial on the oven just to change the temperature a little bit, the whole recipe changes. So unfortunately, you just got to simulate and wait. Over the next few weeks, I'll make some slight tweaks to the simulation and wait 20 minutes for a preview, hate it, and then go again and again and again and again. I tried a few different approaches. I tried throwing a ball at the packet to get a splash around it. I tried exploding a ball of liquid behind the packet, also shooting water at it like a hose and also faking a crown splash simulation. None of them worked. At this point, I was frustrated, stressed, and well running out of time. I needed something to change. Time for the learning. Look, I needed to properly learn how liquid simulations work. You know, I had YouTube and Reddit open this whole time, and I was using that to solve very specific problems that I had during my simulation but I lacked a big picture understanding of how to even make a liquid sim. So I had to take a hit to the ego. I had to realize my skills weren't quite there. I had to go back and learn. I had to learn how professionals do it completely from start to finish. So I took a step back and I bought some professional project files and also enrolled in a short course for small scale liquid simulations on Houdini school. And I just took time to learn gave myself some time to practice. Now with this newfound knowledge and context, I realized that my first idea of throwing a ball of water at the packet was actually the right one. I just didn't have the skills or expertise to make it work back then. So the simulation, again. This one's for the nerds that wanna know how it's done. The source is a liquid ball that is thrown at a rock behind the packet causing the splash and making slight adjustments to the shape of the ball and the rock make a huge difference here. There are three key settings that made this simulation work, and I'm gonna go through them all. First is turning on particle IDs, so each particle got their own unique identifier, which comes in handy later down the track for many reasons, which I'll get into. Reseeding the particles is next. This allows the simulation to expand and contract to make sure that the volume is consistent the whole time. As the splash spreads out or thins, you wanna make sure that there's enough particles there for later on. But this does cause some other issues which I'll get into a bit later. The next is surface tension. And this one is a fun one to play around with because it kind of mimics how small scale liquids, the surface tends to hold together before it breaks. You'd see this when water droplets go to drop from the tap, essentially. And also slowing down the simulation to about a tenth of the speed allows Houdini to process all the little variations that happen and little movements in a small scale liquid simulation. Because Houdini is mainly set up for like large scale ocean simulations. Doing these few things really helped the simulation behave more like small scale liquids and not large oceans. Next, we just need to turn those fluid particles into mesh, which is super easy using the particle fluid node. Adjust some of these settings to match our particle size, 
and apply some dilate, erode, and smoothing just to really clean up the look. Extras. And what's a tasty splash without all that fruit, like I mentioned before? Just needed to randomly scatter some models of the fruit which I already downloaded onto the particles, which we already have from the liquid sim. And we're good to go, right? But nothing is ever that simple. Remember that reseeding problem I mentioned before, where the particles get added or removed depending on what the sim thinks it needs? Yeah, that caused havoc, absolute havoc with scattering objects over the particles. They'll pop in and out. It was, it was a bit frustrating, I'm not gonna lie. And I was like, surely there's a way to be able to track if a particle was at the start of the simulation and at the end of the simulation. And one thing I love about Houdini is there's always a damn way. There's always a way. So I wrote some VEX code and a little bit of a time shift node. I have that all on screen now that was able to find out if a particle was at the start and the end of the simulation and match them based on their unique ID, which we set up earlier. And that just solved that reseeding problem. No more popping in and out. So I sent this version off to the client and they loved it, but I wasn't in the clue just yet. They had notes. They always have notes, right? <laughs> now time for some adjustments, fast adjustments. The notes that the client had were that there were liquid splashing around the packet that you can see and a large hole off to the side, which is also super distracting. And to be honest, like I agreed with the clients on this. While these things are realistic still, they were taking focus away from the packet. So we do need some ability to art direct these things. Another thing I learned from that course is not everything has to be simulated. Some stuff can be done procedurally or manually after the fact. But this is again why I love Houdini. So I found a cool little way to fill the hole by isolating the particles around the edge of that and spawning more particles in the middle, I was able to fill it and cover it up. While not perfect, it still does the job and it was quick. And a similar approach to the liquid covering the packet, I was able to use their IDs to isolate them and just delete them, keeping the sim exactly the same, just removing the splash parts that I didn't like. Working in a way where you can make these changes quickly and on the fly is crucial for smooth, fast approvals in motion design, and especially in 3D motion design. Render time now, we're so close, it's the final week. It's getting a little bit tight, but we're nearly there. The art direction and motion are all signed off by the client. All we need to do now is just light texture, render and composite. It's a lot, isn't it? But it's not. Because during this whole process of simulating, I was also iterating on the look development inside of Solaris because it allows you to work in two separate streams. And because I previously worked on a similar shot for the powder explosion, most of the setting was good to go. Meaning I could utilize everything I could from those shots, but changing the base explosion to our liquid splash and also adjusting the light slightly. And for each flavor, only changing what is necessary, like the color of the splash, the packet, and also what fruit is scattered around. This allowed me to render those shots overnight and got the project delivered on time. After hundreds of failed attempts, one near meltdown and a lot of learning, this is the final shot. I learned it's not just about technical skill. It's about when to keep iterating, when to change approach and when to just step back and learn. Thank <laughs> you.